Hello, I'm Jessie and this is my tiny home on wheels. It's a 1978 Dodge Commander. I got her for 1900 bucks off of Craigslist, 54,000 original miles. And I spent a year and three months renovating her and bringing her back to life. you know, that kind of indefinite 90s look. But when I saw her in her awesome vintage look, I knew she was mine. By the time I talked to the guy the next day, 11 people had already called because he was listing her for so cheap. And there was already somebody on their way, but they fell through and I headed straight there with cash in hand. And the first thing I did was just crawl underneath her because I'm from Minnesota and you have to check, make sure that it's not a rusted out frame. And it looked solid. So after that, I was like, I mean, if it runs for 1900 bucks, I'm sold. This used to be uh, your standard camper seating arrangement. It was like a horseshoe, and then it had a table in the center that dropped down, and there was another bed. I didn't need to accommodate that many people, and I wanted it to be more spacious. I demoed out the two pieces right here, put these chairs in, and then I lifted this up to be table height, so I built... Um, I built it up and then most of the time when I use this I just sit like this and I don't flip it up. Um, if I need more cooking space um, or more dining space, I can do that and then I can have a proper meal. I mean, I rarely have this flipped up, honestly. I spend a lot of time in bed, <laughs> mostly. <Just laughs> that's kind of my, yeah, that's my chill zone. But yes, I have worked on my laptop here. Um, if I have anybody visiting and we want to have like a nice sit down meal and we have like multiple dishes, it's nice to have the extra space to do it. And there has been times like where I've decided to bake and just having more counter room here to bake is definitely essential. So this ended up being kind of just some negative space that I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with it. But this area, absolutely, I had an idea and I built this up a bit higher as you can see this side is higher than that side and there is a cat door there because that is where the cat box is and you can actually access the cat box from outside compartment and i have a very tall cat and so he needed some more height but yes yeah, so this goes into a storage compartment that's outside and the cat box is in there and then i just have uh, more surface i have like fruit and avocados and plant and books and whatnot and then that side just ended up putting more extra kitchen stuff. I didn't want to use a drawer up for the utensils and I salvaged that out of a, a dishwasher. So I thought it kind of has a nice color and I wanted to reuse it and I like it um, to just be accessible. I don't really have a ton of cabinetry in drawers so I feel like anything that I can come up with to kind of stick different things in different places. And also it did have cabinet doors but once again I wanted to open the space up because I just um, you know I figured the more negative space I could create the more open and breezy it would feel. So I found those bins and they happen to fit very very snugly in there so I'm not concerned about them falling out. And I had heard a lot of horror stories about things falling out when people are driving and going on br bumpy roads or taking sharp corners and everything just like the doors opening and everything spilling out so that has never happened to me they are a bit of a pain in the ass like <laughs> i do a lot of this because getting them in and out is kind of tough so i mostly just peer into them and pull things out and moving into the cockpit of mander i have a single bed up here that actually drops down which is why I felt so comfortable getting rid of the extra bed there. I don't ever want more than three people sleeping in here. Uh, I won't pull it all the way down, but it does drop down quite a ways. So it's nice if I have a guest, they have their own little sleeping quarters. I kept the original shag carpeting from 1978. This is one of the few original things that still exist in here. The whole dash, actually there's a lot of original stuff happening up here still. This is like you step into 1978 up here. Uh, but this little table was already here. I just put a new surface on it and I got some chair covers to kind of spruce it up a little bit. But this is the first rig that I got in that I wasn't incredibly intimidated behind the wheel. I don't know, I've always liked old vehicles so there was a part that felt really comfortable. I've had a lot of old cars and for being how 
big she is, I wasn't like totally rocked, but I mean, it's still nerve wracking for sure. And a lot of the gauges <laughs> don't always work. Some of them work sometimes. And I've learned if I, my gas gauge sometimes doesn't work and I have to just give it a little knock in the right place and then it'll, the needle will start working again. Yeah, so this dog house comes off pretty much daily. <laughs> I have had to do so many repairs since I left. Um, it's coming up on my six month anniversary of being on the road and I have already replaced countless fuel filters, two transmission lines, the starter, uh, starting solenoid, I don't know, probably a lot of other things too that I can't really recall off the top of my head. My batteries, um, both of them for the cab and the house, used to be in here um, but I was having a lot of electrical issues originally and just to simplify things and to try to start figuring stuff out a little bit better I separated my batteries and so now my solar batteries are in the back. I have two six volt golf cart batteries. For my solar panel it's a 230 watt. I made a lot of changes to um, not really need much electricity at all. Like all of my light fixtures they used to be fluorescent and I switched them over to be LED fixtures and bulbs. I do pour over coffee. I don't have um, a microwave or I mean I have like a handheld blender and that's really probably my biggest draw. I have a small fan. I have the fan on my compost toilet my water pump, but yeah, I don't, I don't have a lot, of course, like my tablet and my cell phone, but I don't, uh, I don't use a ton of electricity, so it's definitely more than enough. This area, I just did a new countertop and a new sink. It used to have two shallow basins, which I thought wasn't very practical. I just wanted one deep basin, and I got this off of Craigslist for like 20 bucks, and then this wall was super water damaged, and I was running out of time. I couldn't rebuild all of the water damaged areas. So I ended up just sprucing it up by putting this, um, it's like a backsplash. And then I did some sticky tile so you can't see how bad the wall is anymore. So I did have help from family and friends, but I did a lot of it myself. I didn't have any previous experience with carpentry, electrical, um, plumbing, and I just, absolutely dove in and experienced a giant learning curve for a year and three months. And yeah, I mean, I have, luckily I have a lot of friends and family that are knowledgeable and, um, you know, they couldn't always help me physically, but I could call them on the phone and be like, well, what do you think about this? And I did that more than I did any sort of online stuff. Um, I tend to learn better being able to talk to somebody. And I did a lot of it just by going for it and messing up and, <laughs> and being like, oh, well, that didn't work very good. And case in point right here. Um, so I, this was a countertop that had been damaged that I got severely discounted. I cut it and it had a lip and I forgot to include the measurement of the lip. So when I put it on here, I was about this much short back here. So this was kind of my creative way to hide. My, I, I just broke the lip off and then I, and then I, and then it fit perfectly. Then I was, you know, measured correctly. <laughs> um, but I just covered it up with this and continued on. So I think for me, the best way that I learn is through experience and making mistakes. And, you know, I'm definitely not somebody that anybody can tell what to do. So I just prefer to flounder and, you know, sometimes it's tougher, but it sticks more when you make that mistake. You're like, okay, next time if I ever put a countertop in, I will remember to, in, like, you know, subtract this lip measurement. And the thing is, is that a lot of the mistakes people don't necessarily notice, you know, at the end of the day, you have a finished product and that's what's important. So this side, um, it did have, the original countertop did have an extension on it, but I had to make one to match. I, when I do the dishes, I pop this up and this is kind of like my area to um, let the dishes dry and once again, more counter space if I need it. So this faucet was up so high and so close to the back of the sink that it would just, water would go everywhere and it was so annoying. But I got this for like eight bucks and it is a super game changer. So you can like change it around. It has two different kinds of flow. Yeah, it, it has made my life so much easier. So when I am on the road, I do not shower very much. Um, I have a really awesome shower that you will see, but I use it sparingly. 
I, because uh, um, it depletes my fresh water, you know, m the most out of all my other um, needs for fresh water. And it also uses propane because I have to light my hot water heater. My propane tank that's mounted is, I think, 10 gallons. I just use a buddy heater for my heat now because my furnace was doing, actually was using too much electricity when I had to run it at night. And then also it makes it more difficult when I have to get my tank on my um, unit filled, you know, versus just having a 20 pounder tank that I can go and exchange anywhere. So that's a lot, it's a lot easier for heat. I think I can go um, about two weeks on 55 gallons of fresh water. So here's another little like clever thing that I did to kind of speed up the process. When I took the old hardware off of these, it left three giant holes. So I just ended up getting these little wood pieces and covered the holes so I could put my new hardware on, which I don't totally love, but it got the job done. But in here I have just, you know, my plates and bowls and glasses. And I, most of my plates and bowls are stainless steel, which is nice because you can reheat in the oven and on your stovetop. And then if I do take a really hardcore turn and everything goes spilling out, things will not break. They're clattery though which is kind of annoying. And then down here, here's, here's a hot tip, child locks. I was having a really hard time figuring out how to keep these closed without it being uh, super visual. And a lot of the things that I were finding was not um, working with the way that my cabinetry was formed. Like it just, I bought and returned things like a million times. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, why don't I just get child locks? So it works way better. This is where I have my garbage. This is actually uh, a paper shredder container that I found in the garbage. I was like, oh, that'll mount perfect. All about the repurposing. So this is my four burner cooktop and my oven, which people always think is a microwave, but it's not. And this is original. The oven actually had never been used before when I got her. So um, it's been used now for sure, but um, it was all in really great shape. So people always think that these knives must, must fall, but they don't. They're, it's like really, I mean, it's a pretty hardcore magnet. Nothing has ever gone wrong. So I'm not, I'm not worried about it. And if something does go wrong, I'm very far away from where the knives may land. My stove top has been great. Yeah, I love, it's more than I need, so I'm happy with it. 99.9% .9 of the time I cook at home. I do not have the budget to eat out. So I am always grocery shopping and cooking at home. Mander, did I ever, did I ever say that I call my unit Mander? <laughs> yes, I believe so. Did I say Mander? I think Anyways, so. her name's Mander, cause uh, saying the commander all the time is a mouthful. So Mander did have a generator. It sounded like a freight train. And once I got it running, it would not shut off. So we had to like pull the spark plug to get it to shut off. And I just knew that there was no way I would ever use it. So I got a generator that isn't necessarily for RVs. It's not meant to be enclosed, but I have it in case I ever need it. It's the only way that I can run my air conditioning. I really don't ever want to run my air conditioning. I hate white noise, so I don't want to listen to my generator. And um, it uses, you know, gas and it's just, it's just not something I really want to do. I would love to just continue to drive away if it's, if it's too hot. So this is my fridge. I run it primarily off of propane. It can be run off of 110 as well. It does need a 12 volt assist, but once again, it's more than enough space that I need. It was newer, so I know how much these are, um, how much they go for. So when Mander was only 1900 bucks and I knew that this fridge was a newer fridge as well, I was like, it's totally worth it. But before I left, it broke. <laughs> and I had to, this little unit here um, is $400. So I got lucky. I, you know, everybody that I called and Norcold included, they were all telling me like, I have to bring it in somewhere. And I was like, I do not have the time or the money to bring it into a professional. And so I just did troubleshooting as much as I could with like a little 12 volt light tester and kind of decided that this control panel has to be the culprit. And I just ordered it and crossed my fingers and it ended up working. So um, haven't had any problems since. Oh, that was like 
very close before I left and I was like no I'm so close to leaving and that happened so going this way uh, this wall actually used to be a doorway into the bathroom this is kind of where I did a lot of building and changing the blueprint of Mander and uh, making it a little bit more tailored to my likes and wants the bathroom there was a doorway here and then there was a doorway here this area was the only bathroom. There was a toilet right there, and then it was a shower as well. And it just, it was way too tight. I knew that if I was gonna be living in here full time, I would need a shower that I could move my body in. I mean, if you can imagine, I'm a pretty small person, and the toilet was right here, and then you had like this little shower thing, and it was just super cramped. So what I did is, I took out the toilet, and I knew I was gonna get a compost toilet, so I didn't wanna use my black water tank at all, so I capped off the area where the toilet was, and then there's still a shower drain right here. But when I did that, the bottom of this basin obviously looked not great, so I got these slats, and um, the water can still drain through them, but it covers up the fact that there used to be a toilet right there. The walls in here were an awful, really hideous linoleum. I don't even, I'm not sure if it was original, but it was literally linoleum flooring that had been pasted onto the walls. So I ended up painting it with porch and floor paint and then um, put the shower curtain just for extra good measure and I did this on the ceiling, something I already had in my apartment and I just wanted to repurpose it and then did a new faucet and a new shower head. And this is actually an RV shower head. It looks fancy, but it has the pause thing on it and it's meant for low pressure. It's, it's really nice. When I do treat myself to a shower in here, I really enjoy it. I'm like, ooh, I built this. It's amazing. And this is how I take a lot of my showers now. <laughs> I just get a bucket full of water and kind of do, you know, the feet and the pits and, you know, the stinky bits. But I ended up building this platform and then my compost toilet can get mounted here. And it worked out really well because there was already a venting stack uh, for the sink that I could plug my toilet vent to. And then I built all of this as an addition. This used to be open and I basically turned it into a hallway by building um, the bathroom closet here. And, uh, you know, I needed to close off the toilet area and then I certainly didn't mind having more storage areas. I built this storage closet and it also works as kind of my control center for my solar. My solar cables come in through the side wall right there because my panel is, mount is uh, mounted up here. And then the cables run this way and then that goes to my charge controller. And then um, I made a battery bank. Um, box under here and then my inverter is mounted right there. My inverter powers the 110 throughout my rig but I also plug directly into it and you'll see in the bedroom the face of it is sticking out through the wall so I can plug in like my cell phone and stuff on the other side of this closet. But yeah I use the 110 outlets um, throughout Mander and then I use the USBs on my inverter. And then this is um, another crafty moment. When I got Mander, she was severely water damaged, kind of everywhere, but mostly like starting here and back. I didn't know how bad it was until I started investigating and it unfortunately uh, was pretty bad. So I had to rebuild half of this wall and this is my way to hide the fact that I have like a new wall from like this point up and then this is like old old wall and it just it looked kind of janky so I found these at good old Menards and I didn't even have to cut them they actually just snapped in there they're the perfect size so it was kind of meant to be so I um like I said before I had no previous experience I, I hadn't even traveled in a motorhome before so I I didn't really know what I was getting into on any level which was good you know being naive allows you to jump into things <laughs> that are a little bit over your head um, but I am super stubborn and I you know I will do it whether it kills me or not I knew that I was in for a lot of learning and a lot of um, 
I don't know, just just kind of figuring out as I went, but I didn't I didn't expect there to be so much water damage and you know, putting my finger on the wall and it having it just sink in. I was like, "Oh god, that's not good." And then um as I was tearing it apart, you know, it's definitely so my dad was helping me at the at this time he um he's been a carpenter his whole life so we kind of put our heads together to try and figure out how to rebuild um a motorhome's walls and he was just like well where do you stop you know like <laughs> i mean it i could have replaced all of the walls and all of the ceilings in mander i mean she's old and it's definitely seen a good amount of water but we stopped here <laughs> here up and then um, the back did rebuild the whole ceiling and um, half of the wall on this side. But yeah, I mean, there was a lot of times where, I mean, there's a lot of tears. It was, it was really hard, but I knew I was signing up for something that was going to be hard and I wanted to embrace the challenge and, and know that it was an opportunity for growth and for becoming much stronger and more knowledgeable and just being able... Like, I really think people are capable of so much more than they give themselves credit for. And I think that's true, you know, for other people. So I have to think that's true about myself. And, you know, we just have to keep on persevering and we can accomplish it, you know. So over here is the closet. This is another reason how I knew Mander was mine. Most motorhomes do not have good closets. They're like tiny. They're probably maybe this amount of size. And I was prepared to get rid of a lot of stuff. Like I absolutely did not want to have as much things, but I love clothes. So this was, um, and this made me happy that there's like a good amount of storage. I have, you know, my hanging and I have a little shelf up here and then I have some bins here and four drawers. So I didn't have to pare down my wardrobe as much as some people do. Finding that a lot of the older motorhomes did have bigger closets. It seemed like um, as they get newer, the closets get smaller for some reason. And then I installed this door, which is an easy peasy solution to just have some privacy. I got it from Lowe's. It was pretty cheap. I feel like it was maybe 20 bucks and you just cut it to fit. So it comes a certain length and then you can um, just trim it off the bottom and install the trap. So it was an easy solution to create a little bit of privacy. All right, so come into my bedroom. This is where I spend the majority of my time, I won't lie. This is actually where I had to build um, a new ceiling and then the wall is new on this side as well. And then it did not come with this bed platform. I had to build this back here. It was just kind of naked. The bed platform is on hinges so I can lift it up and there's storage underneath. And then on each side that kind of supports the bed platform, there is my fresh water tank over here and I have like my hot water heater over there and my water pumps over here so I can still access everything that I, I need to. This is the bathroom vanity that what used to be on the wall around the corner that I loved the look of so I needed to find a home for it and this ended up being the only wall that it would fit on. But it's nice because I got some bedside stuff in here and nothing ever falls out. This ledge originally was probably only, you know, this wide. And that got demoed out and I rebuilt it to be wider because I knew I had a queen size bed and then I had some negative space so I figured this would be a great spot for the cats to lounge because I have so many windows back here. They absolutely spend a ton of time back here. This is like the chill zone for all of us. Since I have kind of some cubby holes within the framing I just have, you know, suitcases and baskets with sweaters and extra blankets and just whatever I can kind of shove in there. These are LED lights and I just use rechargeable batteries for them, but they have a remote, so it's nice. I can, um, they're light enough for me to read and then I can just like click the remote when I start falling asleep. But these fixtures are LED, so I use those as well if I need a little bit more light. These are from Ikea and since my windows are so massive, um, I had to kind of piece them together and I ended up with gaps here, but these gaps ended up being a really happy, um, accident because the cats love to just kind of peek in between them. So even when everything's shut down and most people can't see in here, my cats can kind of still peek through the 
cracks and and keep watch. The storage up top was already there, um, but since I had to rebuild the ceiling, it ended up being a little lower because um, we beefed it up. And so I had to take the doors off and I just made these curtains um, instead. And everything that goes up there is nothing that's like gonna fall out, you know, just some boxes and stuff. So this is also, not only do these two windows open up, but this back window, um, it came, it came with the screen, but everything was waterlogged and so it wasn't attached anymore. Everything was broken, falling apart. But I just take this off. And I can get even more airflow back here. And then I, it still has a screen, so my cats don't escape and the bugs can't come in. So it, um, you know, having all these windows, sometimes it sucks with the sun coming in because um, it can get quite warm. But when everything's open, there's so much breeze that blows through that it, uh, you know, it can, it can still stay cool even though the sun's coming in. It's really nice having all these windows. I mean, yeah, the downfall for sure is when I was um, in much colder weather. This is the coldest room and the hottest room. Um, but like I said, as long as the windows are open and I have my fan here and I can get the air circulating, it's not too brutal. And since um, this window isn't really open, I can always pull um, you know, there's the screens just on this side, so I can always pull this line to block out like half of the, ugh, <laughs> half of the sun uh, that comes in, and then have this one open so I can get kind of a happy medium. Like I said before, with the heat, I mostly worry about my cats getting too hot. So what I did is this area is the underbed area, and there's more storage under here, and my older cat tends to want to hang out under here anyways. And so I created, oh, there he is, that's a Treyu. And I created a little space under here where I just blocked off any of the areas that can get um, any sort of airflow. And then I have a plastic bin that I bought and I fill it with ice and I just set it right here and I drop this cloth and it keeps it like 10 to 15 degrees cooler than the rest of Mander. So he already hangs out under here anyways. And when I have that ice block there, his paws are just hanging over and he is keeping cool. So I made a different choice on the floors than most people do. I was really kind of concerned about the expanding and the shrinking that floors do when you're not in a temperature controlled environment. I went with, this is a linoleum product and it's free floating. So you don't glue it down, which allows it to expand and shrink all at once without warping. The only thing that was tough about it is you got like one shot to cut it correctly. But I made a subfloor out of quarter inch Luan and um, kind of put it together like puzzle pieces. And then I rolled out the floor and put those puzzle pieces onto the sheet and then cut around it. And it turned out pretty decent and people do a lot of time think that it's the planks, but it's actually just one sheet. Let's check out that cat box room. It's like my pride and joy of my build. So I'm gonna show you where I keep the cat box. My hood ornament. So if you look, there is um, the cat door that I showed you from the inside. And then this is where there's people in there, but <laughs> this is where I keep the cat box. There's the cat cleaner, and then um, right here is the basket with that cooling pad. On this side, this is like a whole dedicated cat space. On this side is where I keep this is their extra wet food, and then this is the extra cat litter. This is just kind of where. This is where Moonchi likes to hang out. This is where, when I drive, she, this is like her panic room. This is where she comes to hang out and to feel safe. And then Atreyu's uh, panic room is under the bed. So this is my Kimco Super 8 150. Um, I knew I had to have something secondary to Mander because Mander gets about six miles to the gallon. And I also knew that, um, you know, she's not a spring chicken and I might need to rescue myself sometimes. 
Um, I did not want to tow a car because I was already a bit intimidated with driving her. Um, last thing I wanted was the extra length and dealing with the jackknifing and I just, I didn't want any of that. So I decided to go with a larger scooter and it has, oh my gosh, it's so amazing. I'm grateful that I have it pretty much daily. Um, when I get set up somewhere, I can offload it and then whether I need to go do laundry or get groceries or, scoot, or just explore or scout out an area, this is like so amazing to have. And it's really, uh, it's really made me feel safe at times too. Like I have had mechanical problems and there's been times where I've been out in the middle of nowhere and I was not sure if Manter was gonna start again. And I was like, well, at least I have my scoot. I'm very grateful to have this all the time and I think I made a smart decision with it. If you wanna follow along um, on my adventure, and uh, trust me, it is an adventure,